Hey folks, in the last video I took some Fortran code, Fortran 90 code, and converted it to Python. And I had a request to take some Python code and convert that to Fortran. So I hope I said that the right way. Uh, basically, I did Fortran to Python, and now I'm doing Python to Fortran. And uh, whenever I make these videos, I kind of just like to code off the cuff. I just think it shows, you know, my thought process. And so the only thing I did to prepare was clean up this Python code. So I've got this home and transfer code for, that I used for Kerbal Space Program. I've got some parameters up here. Um, I've got some other parameters up here. It looks like I've got like an inclination. That's set to zero. Let's set that to, to a positive number. So that's 98 degrees. That seems ridiculous. Let's do an inclination of like 56. Um, we've got a longitude of the ascending node, argument of the periapsis, and then we, it looks like we compute some stuff in the orbital plane. And then we rotate it to the uh, curve and centered inertial frame. We also compute velocity. And then we plot a 2D plot in the orbital plane, a 3D plot um, around the, uh, the cuboid of the curve. In, and then we also plot the velocity. Now, the thing when I convert this to Fortran, though, is that Fortran does not plot implicitly. You can pipe the output to like GNU plot or whatever, um, but that doesn't really work. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I did in the other video. I'm, I'm going to compile and run the Fortran code, and then I'm going to have the Fortran code. So basically, I'm going to I'm going to compile the code here. Uh, I'm going to run the code here, and then I'm going to have the Fortran code create a text file, and then the text file is going to be uh, I'm going to import uh, the text file. Okay. Um, you know what I forgot to do before is. Uh, CD into, I'm sorry, this is going to be uh, kind of boring for you guys, apologize, uh, GitHub Python, and let's see, so this is Python, no, Fortran, no, Python to Fortran, so Python to, oop, to Fortran. All right, so let's just see if this code runs, make sure that I didn't get any bugs in there, and of, of course, of course it has, uh, has bugs. Uh, so let's see, new and v, that's line 85, so down here. Um, oh, okay, it's because uh, v is defined here and here, and that was because I moved the code around. So I'm going to call this vel for velocity, and then put vel uh, there, and then I should be able to see, nope, um, 85 is still, uh, is still messed up. Uh, did I save it? Oh, I didn't save it. Okay, let's go back. All right, cool. So there's velocity. Um, there is a plot of the uh, that little blue thing is Kerbin, and this is a, a huge orbit. Um, here's the orbit in the orbital plane. So uh, basically, what this this plot is doing is, uh, if you look at the uh, if you look at the parameters, the altitude above ground level for the perigee is eighty thousand kilometers, but then the apogee is and, and to make this more make this uh let's do let's do our curve and plus that um basically you're going from eighty thousand kilometers to i don't know like twelve million i guess that's eighty thousand meters so eighty kilometers and then it's going to like twelve thousand kilometers so it's a it's a huge difference um let me just run this code one more time and just make sure that change didn't screw anything up uh, you can also see the eccentricity the eccentricity is almost one uh, so we're getting very close to a parabolic orbit. And you can look at the velocity here. So I'm really, really fast when I'm close, and then I'm really, really slow when I am uh, far away. And that's basically, you know, Kepler kind of predicted that, okay? Um, all right, so what, what we want to do then is uh, we want to, you know, create some Fortran code. So Fortran code to compute a... You know, I called this thing home and transfer. That's kind of misleading. Um, let me rename this and call this just... Uh, I don't know, curb and orbit. How about that? And uh, so let's see, compute Fortran, uh, Fortran code to compute a uh, Keplerian orbit. How about that? Okay. Uh, so we're going to call this uh, Kerbin orbit dot F90. And uh, whenever I code in a new language, like the good thing about coding in a language that I haven't coded before is I can just go grab like old code, right? So I'm just going to grab this code here. So program... Uh, curve in orbit, like that, and then um, I think last time what I did is I just grabbed the, the Fortran code and threw it into Python. I don't want to do that yet because I want to make sure everything's working properly. 
Um, so I want to do write star comma star and say uh, running uh, Fortran code. Okay. And then uh, do I need like a, how does it work? And do I need like a return? Yeah, I need an end program at the bottom. So we'll put an end program uh, curve in curve in orbit. Okay. So then in the uh, code here, I should just be able to do a uh, import OS and then os.system g fortran dash, no, I don't need a dash o. And then let's just do curbin orbit.f90. You know what would be a good idea is to do this in terminal first. So let's do g fortran, da, uh, not dash o, just curbin orbit.f90 and see if that compiles. And then type in dot, dot slash a dot out and everything's good. Running fortran code did just fine. Okay, so then uh, we're going to write the same thing. So there's where we compile the code. I'm also going to do a uh, OS system uh, RM uh, what filed. Uh, it's called a.out. I just want to make sure that it, like, whenever I change something, it recompiles. Um, I'm also going to delete the uh, output file uh, that Fortran eventually is going to make. And so I'm going to put an RM command there. Okay, so then we're going to run the code. So OS system. Uh, Let's see, dot slash a dot out. Okay, and then uh, we need to import the text file. So the text file is gonna have a couple things in it. So it's gonna have, let's see, x, p, and, Q, and y, q, uh, which I think are the uh, 2D elements. Um, so let's see, so we're gonna do a, uh, let's just do a, I'll, say, I'll call it Fortran data is, uh, let's see, np dot load text, and I'm gonna call it output file dot txt. And let's see, so I'm gonna make it so that the, uh, the first column is XP, so I'm gonna do XPF is Fortran data of all comma zero, and then YQF is Fortran data of all comma one. And then uh, we also need, let's see, that's theta, that's just plotting, that's just plotting the, uh, the red circle for curving in the 2D plane. So I'm not gonna have it, I'm not gonna have Fortran compute that. That seems kind of trivial. Um, this surface, same thing, I'm not gonna have it compute it, but I do want it to compute XI, YI, and ZK. So I'm gonna have an XIF is Fortran data, all comma two. Um, YJF is Fortran data, all comma three. And then a ZKF is, and obviously the F is just for Fortran. Um, and then finally, I'm gonna have the uh, VXF, Fortran data, all comma five. Uh, VYF is Fortran data, all comma six. And then I'm gonna have a velocity F is Fortran data, uh, all comma seven, okay? Uh, so that's where we import the data. We're eventually gonna plot it. Uh, let's go ahead and just, you know, plot it now. So I'm gonna do a plot. I'm gonna do an XPF and a YQF. And I'm going to do that in green, I guess. And I guess I'll throw a label in here and call this uh, Python. Again, this is for VNV, uh, verification and validation. You always want to make sure that you verify your code. So whenever you convert something, you want to have a verification code to ensure that the code that you transferred is still working the way you think it's supposed to. Okay. Um, and then I guess I need to throw in a plt.legend down here. I'm going to copy that because I'm going to do the same thing down here. Uh, so this is label. Uh, this is Python and then axe.plot, and that's gonna be xif, yjf, zkf. Uh, I'm gonna do that in green again. I'm gonna do that z order equals zero. Label is Fortran. And then I just need a plt.legend, which I copied so I can just uh, paste that in. I, I, oh, sorry, I, I just realized this is probably too small. I, I apologize. Uh, just I just zoomed in uh, there for you, so hopefully you can you can see it now. Those of you on your cell phone, I, I apologize. Let me run through this code one more time. So here's all the parameters. You know, I'll run through the code when we convert it to to, to Fortran. I don't want to waste any more time. Um, okay, so then we've got plt. Oh, you know what? We need to do this in dashes because if not, we're not going to see it. So that's that one. That's that one. And then okay, so we're going to do plot new comma vx label equals, and I'm going to do uh, dash dash. So this is going to be VXF, the capital F will be for Fortran. And then I'm just going to copy this twice, oops, like that. And this is going to be VYF. And then this is going to be uh, not VZ, there is no VZ because it's uh, 2D. 
well, it's a two-dimensional orbit. That's just how it works. So this is just going to be VF like that. And then I got to change. This is going to be VXF, VYF, and then VZF. Okay. So that should be everything uh, good to go. So now we need to convert everything to Fortran. Okay. So let's. I'm going to just do what I did last time. So I'm just going to grab this and throw it over. So there's actually one thing that I want to check and see. So if you go over to this F90 code over here, so here's a state vector, and here's where you declare how many elements are in the state vector. I'm curious, so if I do real eight, I'm gonna call this uh, XPF, and I'm gonna say, uh, give me you know a thousand data points, okay? If I do XPF equals XPF times zero, right, and then, plus 10, can I do that? Is it gonna freak out? Hmm. Let's see, what, what is going on here? There's the state, real eight, implicit none. Oh, I'm supposed to do this at the top. So you have to declare all your variables at the top, otherwise it, uh, otherwise it freaks out. Uh, so let's try that again. Okay, there we go. So dot slash a dot out. So it didn't throw any compilation errors. So now, now I'm curious. So if I do, do, well here, let's just do this. I'm gonna just do five data points and I'm gonna do write star comma star is XPF. And I'm gonna compile it. There we go, look at that. Okay, so you can do, uh, what I wanted to make sure is can you do um, array manipulation in Fortran. And I'm pretty sure I remember talking to my dad about Fortran. So my dad wrote Fortran when he was in grad school. And I remember talking to him about it and he was telling me that uh, Fortran was invented for engineering computation. So uh, this should be pretty simple here. So I just need to declare all my variables over here. So I'm gonna just kind of go through, let's see, um, what else do I need? R curve in. Make everything real eights, you know, just because. Uh, let's see. Uh, then I need to do the true anomaly here. So this is where things get weird. So I'm going to make a new vector that has 100 data points. And then this is going to be kind of odd because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a function called call linspace. And I'm going to make a function called linspace where it's going to give you, you give it new, you give it the variable that you want, the um, start point and end point and then the number of data points and then you just need to make sure that these the data points are the same. Uh, so I'll write that routine later uh, or maybe we should write it now or well, you know why not. Uh, so let's scroll to the bottom here. So let's do let's go over to the parachute.f90 code and let's grab how to make a subroutine. So here's a uh, subroutine and then we just do an end oops endcon.nom. That doesn't make any sense. Let's just grab this over here. So it'll be end subroutine derivatives. Okay. And except that's not going to be derivatives. It's going to be linspace and it's going to be array. And then it's going to be uh, start and then end and then n. And then uh, I'm pretty sure I need to define everything that comes in. I do. Yeah. So uh, there's a way to make global variables. So like this number 100, like this is kind of bad programming because it's like in 15 different places. Um, and this linspace command, that's the other thing that's kind of an issue here is that linspace command right now, I hope I don't ever have to use it again because it only works one time. Um, so I really don't actually need this N here because if I make this a parameter, um, you know, that's just, you'd have to make global variables and things like that. And I don't, I don't exactly remember how to do that. Maybe in a separate video, I can, I can work on that. But anyway, so let's make a real eight um, array of a hundred. Uh, there's going to have a start point an end point. And we're also going to have a step. So the step, if you recall in Linspace is going to be the start uh, minus the end and that whole thing divided by N, I believe. And then the uh, then we just we loop through so we do a do loop and the do loop you do i equals one to n so I'm gonna say oh and what is n so n is a hundred see that's the thing you 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 end up having to hard code this and uh, looks like uh, Sublime's been doing this to me Sublime will just like you know freak out and uh, and crash on me 
Um, so hopefully I didn't lose anything. So this is 100. Um, let's see. So then I'm going to do do i equals 1 to 100. And then I'm going to have an end do loop. Oops. And in here I'm going to say um, array of i is equal to. So then I have to do, I'm going to do the start plus i minus 1 um, times my step. And I, I believe that will give me everything that I want. We can debug that later uh, when we cross that bridge, but that lint space command will essentially now uh, create that array. Uh, so that was a lot just for that simple command. Unfortunately, we're in we're in uh, we're in Python, so we can't really use uh, uh, built-in functions. Uh, there is a matmol function, but you know it, uh, there isn't much left. Okay. All right. So let's keep going. So we need a variable. Let's do real eight. Uh, we got let's see alt. AGL, we got RP, we got RA, we got A, we got E. Uh, let's keep going. We got to comment this out. Uh, this write command turns into a write star comma star E. I don't want to purchase uh, this. I'm sorry. Uh, those of you who are watching, I do not want, I do not pay for Sublime. Hope that's okay. So then we got I, W, and W. Oof, that, uh, I don't know if Fortran's going to freak out. Oh, there's also no pi. So I need to make a variable pi. If there's probably a math toolbox for pi for in Fortran, but I, I don't really care. Anyway, I'm going to call this WP for the argument of periaps. So I'm going to make a capital, a capital W, a WP, and an I. Um, and I'm, I'm going to call this inclination, in, inc, and eccentricity, ECC. And then I'm going to call this, what is this, the uh, semi-major axis? So I'm going to call this uh, axis. Okay, so A is going to change to access, E is going to be ECC, W, WP, and then ink. Okay, um, we need to define pi. So last time I checked, pi was 3.14159265.4. Hopefully that's enough precision. Um, then we're going to, we're not going to plot in the orbital plane, we're just going to compute it. So uh, that should be fine. Uh, hopefully there's a cosine uh, built in and we can do it array wise. And uh, that should be it. So we get rid of that and that, and then we uh, then we rotate. Okay, so this is where things get things get kind of wild. Okay, so I don't recall. So Z R. Oh shoot, I need to declare all these variables. So we have what? So this is axis. Uh, this E is um, E C C. That R is fine. P the parameter. E C C new X P. I want that to be F. And did I define those up here? No, I haven't yet. So we have a real 8, XPF 100, uh, YQF 100. So that should all do okay. Um, and then we need a ZR. So we actually need an XIF of 100. We need a YJF of 100. And then we need a ZKF of 100. And it looks like we need a ZR too. Why do we need a ZR? XP. Oh, it's because, so actually, this is the 2D plane. So this is actually like PQRF, ZRF, and it's just uh, zero times that. It's because you, you need, a, to rotate something in three dimensions, you need a third axis. So you need a, a, a ZRF uh, of 100. Okay. Um, so did I say ZKF? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so, oh man, this is a lot of code. I should be debugging this like in steps, but I'm not because uh, I'm just being wild. Okay, so the question is, is how do you make uh, 2D arrays? So I'm pretty sure you can do a real eight, what was that variable? TPI, TPI three. I think you just do it like that, if I recall. Um, and then you do TPI one, one, I think. I might have to look up some old code. Um, if this throws an error, I'll look it up. But anyway, so we do cosine of W, yada, yada. And then little w is WP. And then we've got sine of W. And then sine of WP. And then cosine of ink. And then we have a comma. So TPI, this is 1, 2. That's a negative cosine W times a sine. I get it rid of the NPs. WP, W... WP, maybe this code was too hard to convert. Um, maybe, it was, maybe it's not. Maybe, uh, maybe you guys are enjoying this, watching me uh, delete NPs here. Who knows? 
And I guess I'll find out when the uh, comments are posted, you know, or the or the, the, the thumbs downs are posted. Um, all right. So I'm just moving through W times W. I think it's going to be interesting when I start debugging this because I, I feel like I'm going to make a mistake somewhere through here. And uh, I don't know. We're just we're just going to have to cross that bridge when we get there. That was a minus sign. See that like that. That's going to be that would be a very, very, very hard uh, variable to fix or, or, or bug to fix. Like even these lowercase like, uh, you know, lowercase uh, W's and not capital W's. I just feel like that was uh, bad programming on, on me on my part when I was coding the Python. All right, well, we're in third row. We're almost there. Uh, here we go. We got NP, W, INC. That's a comma, so that's TPI, 3, 2. And then let's see, NP, W, P, sign, inc. And then finally, TPI, 3, 3. Was that, a, was that a negative? No. Okay, and then we got cosine of I and C. Okay, so hopefully that works. All right, so then we've got, so XIF is XPF, YJF, XPF, ZKF, ZRF. And then uh, we do a do loop. So do I equals 1 to 100, right? That's our, our variable length. And then we do this thingy, and then we do an undo. And so we just do XIF of I and then yjf of i, and then a zkf of i, is this variable here, and just array start at one in Fortran, not like C or Python. This matmol function, believe it or not, is actually built in to um, Fortran. So this should work, I hope. I might have to, again, I might have to look it up. Again, this is, this, I'm hoping this is good for you guys to see. Um, okay, so this xyi, is a three by one. So we have an X, Y, I is a, is a, is a, th uh, a three. M Matmol in, in Fortran, like they figure out how to multiply it. So then this X, Y, Z, zero, that's also a three by one. So X, Y, Z, zero is a three by one. Now that zero looks fishy. That looks like an O. Why would I do that? Why would, oh, is it, I don't, you know what? I don't know why I did that. Um, so I don't need to make this an array. I just need to say the first element is X, P, F of, I, this is why, by the way, I changed inclination to I and C, and then X, Y, Z, 0, 2 is I, and then X, Y, Z, 0, 3 is I, and that should be, those should be all Fs, okay? And then we compute velocity, so VX is, okay, again, hopefully square root is built in, and then we just get rid of that. Uh, let's see, and then VY, and these are Fs, Fs, velocity F. Do I have velocity F somewhere? I probably don't. That's 100. Man, I'm going to get so many inner matrix dimensions. Don't agree. This, this code is going to blow up, guaranteed. How many, how many errors do you think are going to pop up? Just, just guess in the comments before you watch the video. This is going to be horrendous. Okay, we are ready to compile. Oh, wait, I can't just do a make. i got to do a uh, G4 trend. Oh, oh, oh man. Uh, let's see. N subroutine derivatives. That's an easy thing to fix. That's a lin space. Uh, let's try again. Uh, let's see. X, Y, Z, 0 has no explicit test. So you want to always scroll to the first error. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it doesn't like these double parentheses. So it must be, I'm just going to guess, it should be, it's, I'm guessing it's a comma. Let's see if that error goes away. Uh, sure enough, it does. There's a warning here. I'm just, uh, I guess I'm going to throw some parentheses in here. You know, why not? If you're giving me a, if you're giving me a warning, I may as well. The semicolon doesn't need that. Okay, uh, so now I should, wait, what are you doing? Use parentheses. Oh, Okay. I'm going to put more parentheses on there? I can. Uh, let's actually look at the errors. So, oh, okay, so this, uh, this 2 times pi, obviously that doesn't exist. Uh, and then, okay, and then down here, I need to change all of these to commas, and then commas, and then commas, and then commas, and then commas. Uh, you know what? I should have done the find and replace. That would have been a heck of a lot easier. All right, we still have uh, errors here. So uh, let's see, np dot is still messed up. There's an np dot in here. Okay, let's try again. What else do we have? We've got 
uh, unclassifiable statement. Did I forget a comma somewhere? What line of code is that? That's line 61. Let's see, 61. Oh, uh, I forgot to put an equal sign there. No big deal. Uh, let's see, XIF, unclassifiable statement. XIF. Um, does that variable not exist? X, no, XIF is there. Um, and it equals that. So it must be, hmm. Uh, let's Google uh, Matt Mole here real quick. Matt Mole Fortran. And is, is it a call or? No, you just do Matt Mole result matrix A, matrix B. Um, so that's not, that's not the issue. There is an unclassifiable statement on line 65. Why? Uh, how do do loops work? Do i equals 1 to n, and then n do, right? So that's all good to go, right? Does it not, does it just not like that comment? Let's get rid of that comment. Um... Well, let's see. It was expecting a end, end subroutine statement somewhere. Okay, so there's an extra end do here. I, so, what I was thinking was is that 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 error looks kind of weird, and I'm cur and I was curious if it was because like I had like an end somewhere in the wrong spot. Um, so it still has an unclassifiable statement. It also says that right e is wrong because I changed that. So that should be ECC. Uh, let's see. Apparently I made, oh, I forgot to, no, start and step. Oh, that's right. Uh, I sent it an integer. So 2.0, 2.0. I got to make sure I do a 0.0. Oh, I passed a real four. Interesting. Uh, how do I make it a, can I do a, I think I think I remember you do like a D zero. Either that, or I'll just make it a real four. Okay, yeah. So I, I don't know why where I pulled that out of my hat, but if you make it a D zero, that's a real eight. Um, so I'm still having this. Let's see. So symbol I doesn't exist. Wait. Oh, interesting. Do you need to make an integer? Integer for I to do a do loop, in which case I would have to do one down here as well. Seems like it. Is that how I did it in the parachute program? Yes. I made it a real, but it doesn't need to be. Okay, I'm getting a heck of a ton of errors here. So it still has unclassifiable statement. Symbol P has no implicit type. That's an easy thing to fix. We just do a comma P. Um, let's see. R has no implicit type, so we just add R. Uh, X, Y, Z, I, oh, okay, there we go. See, I didn't realize V, X, F has no implicit type. Uh, v, X, F, 100. So sometimes it's just like, you, you, it's good to just tackle other errors uh, because, you know, so R, R needs to be a, a array, an array of 100. And then I guess I'm gonna move V, X, F down here, V, X, F. I just think it's cleaner code. This was a bear of a code to convert. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. There we go. It compiled. Holy crap. Did it run? Ho, ho. So the eccentricity looks good. Um, let's uh, print some things. So let's do i equals 1 to 100. Um, how do I make an output file? Okay, so here's where I make an output file. Oops. Uh, see, this is why I just like to copy code. So Okay, so let's uh, output contents to file. So I'm going to open unit 93. That's fine. I'm going to make, I'm going to, I think I called this output uh, files and then open flag. That needs to be an integer. Looks like my kids finished their video. So I need to finish this quick. We're almost done. Assuming I don't have any crazy errors. Ah, see, that's what happened. Sublime auto completed and threw that in there. Anyway, so I'm just going to do write 93 comma star whatever format I want and then I'm gonna to go to the uh, fortune code so I want this is the format I want so I'm gonna copy this and throw this in here 
and then I'm just going to comment it. That way I don't have to go back and forth over and over again. Everything is an array of 100, so I should just be able to do XPF of I, um, YQF of I, uh, X I, XIF of I, uh, YJF of I, ZKF of I, uh, VXF of I, VYF of I, and then VELF of I. And then I want to close the file, so I think I just do... Is it just close? Oh, I did not close. I'm going to guess it's just close 93. That's my guess. If I was a programmer, that's what I'd do. Let's cat the output. So output files. Ha <laughs> ha, that looks pretty good. Okay, so the moment of truth. Let's run the curve in orbit. Python 3, curve in orbit. Everybody cross their fingers. Oh, no. Okay, so output file. Did I spell it wrong? Oh, it's output files. So in the program, I call it output files, but it's really output file because it couldn't it couldn't find the file. Okay, and then it said VZF is not defined. Why did I call it VZF? So I don't need this parachute.f90 anymore. VZF. Oh, it should be VELF. All right, everybody cross their fingers. It looks like I'm going to get some plots. Oh, my goodness. Did it work? I'm not going to lie. This is pretty freaking cool. So the downside is, of course, in Python, if I went up here and changed this 100 to 1,000, the Python code would work. Ooh, maybe not. Where is there 100 somewhere else? Oh, it's because, oh, interesting. I forgot to spit out. Interesting, I forgot to, let me, let me tack that on at the end, new of I and then use, because I want Fortran to have new f, nuff, is Fortran data, all comma eight. And then everywhere where I plot with a new, which I think is just down here, new f, new f, oh, come on, new f, and then new f. So now Python should have a thousand data points, oh. Interesting. Is my start, oops, it should be end minus start. I don't know if you noticed that, but my, my true anomaly actually went backwards to minus pi. Uh, that, was, that was my whoops. There we go. Okay, cool. So if you look at this plot in particular, like Python is super smooth, but Fortran is, is, is jagged. And if I go back to the Fortran code, right, and if I were to change this 100, I would have to change every single 100. So everywhere there's 100, I have to change it. Now there's probably a way to make it a global variable and a parameter. Um, and there's probably even a len command. I bet you there's a len command in, in, uh, in Fortran. Len command Fortran. Yeah, so there's a, there's a len command in Fortran. So I probably could have made this code nicer and prettier, but you know what? It works and it's in Fortran now and supposedly it's faster. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I have no idea how long I've been talking. It's probably been long enough. I'm going to go ahead and push this code. So git status, git add. Uh, let's see, hold on. Git, let me, let me, let me rm a.out, rm output file.txt. I'm going to just rm all of the txt files. And then just git add the Fortran code and the Python code. And then git commit dash am added uh, Python to Fortran conversion. And then git push dot origin master. All right, so you've got that code now. Uh, if you're watching this video, it's there. I hope you enjoyed it. And I guess I'll see y'all in the next video.